Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and today I'm going to show you how to recover your ironing board. You're going to make a new cover for it and a new pad for it, because that does need to be replaced every once in a while. It's really, really easy, just very, very simple sewing, no shaping, flat pieces, super simple. Let's go do it. This is my existing ironing board. You can see that the cover is pretty faded. I like to keep my ironing board in a sunny window, so that means it gets really bleached out from the sun and it gets all this gunk all over it. It just gets a lot of water stains. I use it all the time, and so every year or two I replace the ironing board cover. I know people are gonna ask, so I'm gonna tell you right now, this is an oversized ironing board. I got it at Target. It's a Michael Graves design. I don't know if they still even make it anymore, but it is, yes, larger than your typical ironing board, especially it's noticeably wider. So we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna show you how this is put on there and how easy it is to replace. One thing I did want to show you is that the back of the iron, the ironing board itself is a grid. It's a metal grid. And one of the problems that I'm having right now is that the padding has gotten so worn out that the grid is now showing through uh, the fabric when I iron. It's actually, it's not really scorching a pattern in, but you can see that grid showing through the fabric and I don't want that to keep happening. So this is how the ironing board cover is attached. Sometimes they're knotted. I think the last time I did this, I just happened to have one of these um, stopper things. It's just got a spring in it and you can buy them at any fabric store. But I'm gonna pull that right off the string. And now this string is just threaded through some bias tape. And I'm gonna save the string and reuse it. And it just is a matter of Pulling it out. My ironing board has this shelf at the end, so I do need to pull my cover out, but there's a little gap there, so that just pulls right off. Just work it the rest of the way off, and let me get this out of here. What you have when you pull out all the gathers from getting that string out of there, you really just have a flat piece of fabric. So I'm going to pull the string out and then come back and show you the shape of the fabric cover. So here are the pieces that we have. We've got the ironing board pad, which the metal had just pressed in there so deeply that it was no longer um, working very effectively as a cushion. But I'm not throwing it away. I'm going to use that as a pattern to cut a new ironing board pad. And the next level is the ironing board cover, which it's kind of, it's been wrapped around that edge for a couple of years now, so it wants to curl, but you can see that it really is just a flat piece of fabric. All the way up to there. So what I'm gonna do is use this as a pattern to make a new one, a new cover, and the pad is a pattern to make a new pad. So let me get the new fabric. This is the new fabric that I'm gonna use. And ideally you wouldn't want to piece sections together because you don't really want a seam in there, but this is the way I wanted it to look, so I went ahead and did that. One thing I did though to keep that bulk of the seams to a minimum, normally I would press the seams just toward whatever the darker colored fabric is, but in this case I went and pressed the seams open just so it would minimize some of the bulk so I wouldn't get it super bulky on one side and not at all on the other. This is my cover. So I'm going to lay that out. Now I'm just going to lay my new fabric, my old cover on top of it and I'm going to grab a couple of pattern weights and I'm going to use these to stretch out that curve where it's used to being pressed around the ironing board. And I'm going to lay that whole thing out and put the, put the weights down on it and then cut around it once I get them all in place. And I'll come back when it's all cut and we'll do the same thing with the 
pad. Okay, I've cut the top, the cover for the ironing board. This time I need to replace the pad, and I wanted to make sure to tell you that you won't have to replace the pad every time. This is actually the original pad that I've had on this ironing board, and it has finally, finally worn out. And that's been several, several years. I've gone through a couple of different covers before I had to replace the pad. When you do, I like to use a, a natural fiber. It kind of holds the moisture of the steam. Um, it'll just kind of shoot through any synthetic, if you used a synthetic batting. A wool batting would be great, or an old wool blanket, but in this case, I used 100% cotton batting because that's what I could find. Even on my giant supersized ironing board, a crib-sized batting will make a double thickness pad. So I folded this over. So this is two layers of the cotton batting. And then I smoothed everything out and made sure that there were no wrinkles in there. And the batting is going to kind of cling to itself. So once you get the two layers together, if you really just smooth that out, they'll tend to stick together really nicely. And this pad is so heavy that I don't need to use any pattern weights to hold it down. And just like I did the cover, which I didn't show here, but that's why I'm going to show this, you just want to cut around the pattern piece. It's okay if it's a little bit bigger. I wouldn't make it any smaller. But remember that this is just going to fold over the edges of your ironing board. So it doesn't matter if it folds over just a little bit farther than the original did. And it doesn't also have to be, it doesn't have to be super neat. So I'm just doing a fairly rough cut all the way around here. You can see looking at this that the, even the original manufacturer's one has some kind of jaggedy cut marks in there. Down here where it was wrapped around, I'm just going to hold it down. There. Work my way down the last edge. Last cut. And now we have all the pieces ready to go. So the next step, let me just pull out the cover, is that we need to make a channel to go all around the edge for that string to slide through. And for that, I'm using just some purchased bias tape. I used some pretty wide bias tape that's going to make it really easy for me to thread that string in. Um, this is a standard four yard pack. It was 49 cents. I'm thinking that that was probably something that I already had in my bucket of stuff. I think there's probably considerably more than that now. And this is already, when you buy it, the double fold tape, it's already going to have the edges folded over. So all I'm going to need to do is fold this over the edge of the fabric and then sew it down. And I'll sew it once through both layers. But I'm not going to do that on here. I've got another video about working with bias tape. So I'm going to go to the machine and do that. But one thing I did want to show you is that most ironing board covers you want to start and stop at the nose, the narrower end of your ironing board, um, because that's where most of them tuck under nicely. On mine, especially since I have that, that shelf on the back, I don't want to have to be working my drawstring cords underneath that shelf. So I'm going to make sure to start and stop my bias tape right here at the end. So I'm going to go sew that on at the machine and come back and show you the last steps. Okay, I've got my bias tape on here. Don't worry about it being too neat. Remember, this is going to go underneath your ironing board. Nobody will ever, ever see it. Um, I'm getting ready to thread my string in there. Remember, I saved the string from the old one that I pulled out. I'm going to use this needle to thread it. It's got a nice big eye, and most importantly, it has a blunt tip. This is a big, big tapestry needle, so it has a blunt tip. So when I thread it through, it's going to tend to run down the channel instead of poking through the sides. So I've got this threaded. I've got a nice long tail in there. 
and I'm going to start just threading it in, push it in, pull it off, just like if you were threading elastic through something. So I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but I'm just going to keep pushing the needle through, bunching up the fabric onto it, and then pulling it off. Pushing it, the needle in, and see that tapestry needle goes right through there. Hold on to the tip of the needle and then pull the fabric back. And I'm just going to keep work, working my way all the way around until I come out the other end. And I'll come back with that. So I've got my threads coming out of here, two ends. Since I have this little doohickey, I'm going to go ahead and use it, but you could just tie yours in a knot um, on there. Turn this. You have to push, the, push it so you have a hole there, and then thread both of your tails through. I got one through, but not the other. Wait, I think there's the other. There we go. So you get both of the tails through, and then there's a spring in there, so it'll clamp that in place. Now, I just lay it face down on the table or on the floor, wherever you have to work. Make sure you get this cover or the pad nice and smooth and fairly centered on there. And we can smooth the cover out a little bit more on there. Mostly you just want to make sure that there aren't any wrinkles in that padding. And then just set the ironing board in place. And in my case, I need to tuck this up underneath this shelf. And when I tighten that up, that'll probably go in the rest of the way. And then go down to your pointy end. And just start drawing those strings up. And it's all going to magically curve around. And it'll take a little bit of doing to get it drawn nice and tight and snug. And this is where having this, this kind of a stopper is handy because you can tighten it, shift it around, and then pull it a little bit tighter. And what I'm going to do is get this end under. There, now it's tightened in there. So I can tighten that up a little bit more. And then I'll flip it over. Normally I would do this standing up, but I want you guys to be able to see it. Smooth this out. Make sure I didn't get any wrinkles under there. Work it under. And then now that the weight is not on it, pull it off the end of the table a little bit. I can just keep pulling, cinching that up. And it for a couple of days, a few times using it, it'll loosen up a little bit and settle into place. And just after you've used it for a few days, give it another tighten. And then another few days later, give it another tighten and see how it goes. But eventually you'll get it snug down and it'll be really well molded to there. And I have a brand new ironing board cover. So that's it. No fancy seams, no fancy shaping. It really is just pull off your old ironing board cover, use it for a pattern to trace a new one, put some bias tape around the edge, thread a string in there, pull it tight, and you're done. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next time.